Good afternoon, everybody. It's LinkedIn Tuesdays with Career DFW. Thank you very much for being with us here on July 7th. For those of you who are on Zoom, if you've got a question, please, uh, when you think about it, stick it in the chat box for us. Uh, just open up the chat box, stick the question in there. I'm monitoring the chat box. And for those of you who are on uh, Facebook, I am monitoring the Facebook feed. Uh, please just enter your question there as we, as we go through the uh, presentation today. Please note this event is being recorded. It's currently live on the Facebook page, live on Facebook. The recording will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and on the Career USA YouTube channels for others to view in the future by participating in this event. And if you post a comment in the chat box or have your microphone or camera on, you give consent for your comments, name, and picture to appear. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jeff Morris. I founded Career DFW back in 2008 to help the unemployed in the DFW area. In 2012, I started CareerUSA.org to help people outside the DFW area. I facilitate and lead the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. I've been doing that since 2007, and I'm a member of the practice interview team. And I've been doing that since 2017. Well, every Tuesday, we have three different speakers. Locke Alderson, who's a career consultant, Terry Sullivan, founder of BuzzPro, and Ruth Lipsky, who's a career coach, and uh, they give presentations on LinkedIn. Well, all three of them decided that uh, they need a day off, so the they're Tuesday, they're on vacation today. So you'll get to listen to me today. So I'll share some of my comments and my, uh, uh, what, I, what I'm thinking about LinkedIn. So uh, I'll share some of my thoughts. We'll take a look at uh, a couple profiles and then we'll look at some of your profiles if you'd like to uh, let me know about them and we'll uh, show your profiles as we get going here. So first thing I just wanna say is just know that um, learning to learn LinkedIn and everything you want to know about LinkedIn can take you hours, if not days. And the most important thing is at the very bottom where I talk about LinkedIn is always, always changing. You never know. I mean, they may have changed stuff today. I just read an article today about something uh, that's happening. So, uh, you know, every day LinkedIn is changing. They're adding new features, taking away old features. So just be aware of that. So what is LinkedIn? LinkedIn is an online social networking for business professionals. Um, in the past year or two, I think that it's become, people are posting more social things on there, which I don't like. I wish people would stick to business, business related topics. Uh, let's keep LinkedIn for what LinkedIn is. On average, they have 675 million people using it at least once a month. So uh, many people use it more than once a month. I'm on it every day. So you got to count me as 30 people. Uh, and that's a 14% increase since 2018. So it is very, very popular in the United States. There's over 167 million users. So here's an interesting article I saw back on uh, 2016. It was in the Dallas Morning News. Uh, I thought it was a great article and a great little story about social media. This kid said, I did not make a LinkedIn profile for my friends. I made it to show people who I don't know, who I am and what I am about. And I think that totally sums up what LinkedIn is. If you're, if you're on LinkedIn and don't have a complete profile and haven't filled out everything, you're not telling anybody who you are. If you just have a LinkedIn account and you have your name and a job title and maybe a couple jobs uh, companies that you've worked for in the past, that's not going to help tell anybody what it is you do and how you can help them. So a couple of my uh, pet peeves. Number one, my biggest pet peeve is do not use a generic invitation. Every day I get invites from people and they just clicked on my picture and just sent a connect thing and they didn't send a personal note. Well, I'll show you here shortly, but I have like 80 or 90 people in that pile right now that I haven't ignored, but I'm probably need to clean them out because I'm not going to connect with you if you don't send me a personal note. So I happened to look at this person's profile because it was interesting and I just wanted to see who this person was who sent me an email or uh, an invite. His name is Jerry because it says right up, you can see up here where it says Jerry's uh, 
in, uh, profile. And he's got his website listed here and he has his address and he has his instant messaging account and he has his birthday. Well, I'm not, I don't plan to send Jerry a birthday card, so I don't need his address on LinkedIn. And uh, I don't really need to know when his birthday is. But the two things that I do want to know is how can I contact him? And I don't want to use InMail because I have a free account. I don't use the, I don't have the premium account to send a lot of email, InMails. So I'm looking on somebody's profile for your link, for your email address and your phone number. Now, a lot of women may not want to put their phone number on there, or maybe you don't want to put your only cell phone out on there. Get a Google Voice number. This past Friday at the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group, we had a presentation on how to set up Google Voice. If you want that, you're welcome to send me an email, and I will be glad to forward that on to you. You can also go back and view the presentation. It's on the Career USA YouTube channel. Uh, just go to Career, just go to uh, Career, Dia, Career USA, and when you look under the playlist, look under the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group, and you'll see the uh, most recent uh, setting, which was this past Friday on how to use Google Voice. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, even on a cell phone or a mobile phone or your tablet, you can send a personal note. Now, you have to, it takes an extra step. So if I were to click on this connect button for Dr. Er Glenn, Dr. Glenn Earl, it would immediately send out a connection request. <coughs> but if you click on the more, in some cases it's been changed, now it's a little hamburger. If you change that, up will come another second screen where you can send a personalized invitation. So always send somebody an invitation. Tell them how you met where you met, that you saw me here on today's presentation, uh, just whatever. You don't like the color orange, I don't care. Send me a personal note so I know how we met and I'll be glad to connect with you, but that's my one requirement. And I think that should be your mantra that everybody here commits to always sending a personal note because I think it's very, very important. Okay, so there's a couple things about LinkedIn search optimization I wanna talk about. Number one, the key to this is that your ranking is the volume of keywords that you have in the searchable fields, okay? You need to have a job title that makes sense. You need to have that you're looking for. You need to have keywords in the about section. You need to have keywords in your job, in the jobs that you've done in the past. Uh, I've heard from experts that you probably want to have keywords three to five times, a, a keyword three to five times throughout your profile to make you move up in a job search. Number two, and we'll talk about that and we'll sh I'll show you uh, some of those here in just a second. So second thing is we want to talk about settings, where to find them, what you should turn on, what you should turn off when you're editing your profile. And I will point those out here in just a second. And thirdly, current keywords, understanding the keywords that are finding you. So, you know, you. So a few things you wanna make sure you do, you want your first name and your last name in there. There is a place for a previous name, uh, a maiden name, uh, something new that I just read about today. Uh, and the feature is only on the mobile devices. And I haven't tried my mobile device because I just read about it about a half hour ago. It's not on the desktop yet. If you have a last name, if you have a name that's hard to pronounce, you can now record your own voice pronouncing your name. And I think that's extremely valuable. So what you'll do is you'll see a little audio icon right next to your name uh, when you've recorded something. So uh, for those of you who have a hard to pronounce first or last name, you have the opportunity to do your own. And it is your voice that you're recording. So make sure when you do it, that you do it slowly and clearly. Uh, you wanna make sure your display name is on there and make sure that your profile is public. What good is it for you to be hiding any of your contact information if you're currently looking for a job? You wanna make sure your professional headline has job titles, not what you've done, but what it is you wanna do. And you've gotta make sure that those job titles aren't, you wanna make sure it's the title that you would see on a job description. 
And uh, we'll show some of those here in just a second. If you do not post anything, it will automatically pull your last job on there. You want to have a location, OK? So if you were to, for, for instance, if you live in Prosper, you may want to list Dallas-Fort Worth. You may just want to list Plano. Uh, you can't list North Dallas. Uh, so I would just, you know, I would suggest that, you know, if you live, if you live in one of the small surrounding cities from Dallas or in a small surrounding city anywhere, pick the geographical area that you live in so that it can give, provide you with the most information. Once again, I already talked about this, contact information. How can somebody reach out to you? In addition to putting it into your contact field, you also want to make sure it's in your about section. And I'll show you where I actually have it in three different places. And I'll show you that when I'll show you my profile here in just a few minutes. Your about section. This should be keyword heavy. This is real estate that tells people who you are, what you do, and how you can help them. You should mention a couple of your star stories. Keyword heavy. You want to make sure that, you know, this is, this is where people are going to, this is the quickie, the top half of your resume of selling somebody to go, hmm, I want to look a little bit more and see what else is in here. Once again, this is a place to put your contact information. Our speaker, uh, Locke Alderson, says it needs to be on the very first line. Um, our speaker, Ruth Lipsky, says it should be on the last couple lines. So you have to sort of pick and choose. You'll see lots of people doing it different ways. I don't, once again, there's no right or wrong way to do LinkedIn. Uh, take bits of uh, wisdom from different people and do what you think uh, makes sense and what you feel the most comfortable with. Now, there's a couple of tasks that I think you need to do once you get your profile loaded and you've loaded all your information. One of the interesting things that people talk about sometimes is how far back should I go on my LinkedIn profile? Um, personally, I think you should go all the way back to your first job out of college. The reason being is because when you do that, you can then connect with other people who work at that company back then and you don't know where they are today. They could be future bosses. These are great contacts to be able to go back and reach out to. So another optional task that I think you should do is, you know, if you're a project manager, you should type in in the search box project manager and see, look at 10, look at 10 or 15, 20 profiles of other people with your same job title and see what they put in their about section. What did they have that maybe got them to the first page that you can add to your profile. You know, make you, you want your profile to be to what it's so that it shows up at the very top. And to do that, you've got to be keyword heavy. And so you've got to be able to check other people and go, oh yeah, I've done that too. I should add that to my about section and make sure I stick it into my uh, job listing into my bullet points underneath my job. Be sure to change your profile accordingly. You know, you're, you're going to go research what other people have on there, find the good things, take it and put it into your profile. Once you've got your profile complete, you want to reach out to connections. Now, who are your connections? They could be classmates, they could be colleagues, they could be friends. Reach out and find as many people as you can, make connections. Uh, LinkedIn now, I mean, several years ago, they changed it. It used to be it was erased. Who could have the most connections? I think the maximum you're allowed to have is 30,000 connections now. I think that's what they've limited it to. Uh, but back in the day, it was erased and, and people were, you know, you know, I've got 1,000, I have 2,000, I have 3,000. And you'd see their number on the profile. LinkedIn has changed it. So now you only see once you hit 500, that's the magic number. That's the number of people you need to connect with. So go back, find people you used to work with, find people who you currently work, who you've worked with in, uh, any time in the past, find alumni, find people who worked with, who've gone to school with you at the same place. Connect because every time you do that, it will expand your connections. Be sure to, be sure to send a personal note when you connect with everybody. I, I, I hammer this over and over again. To me, this is the number one violation in, in LinkedIn. If I was the king of LinkedIn, uh, or if I own LinkedIn, I would require a message. 
for you to type something. I just think it's that important to let somebody know how you connect. Because the nice thing is, in the old days, there actually was a field that you could put that I could go and type in where I met you at. But LinkedIn doesn't provide that anymore. So the only way I'm going to know how I met you is I can, when I call you up, I can go see what message you sent me three years ago or five years ago or seven years ago. So that's why it's important to send that personal note. Don't send the personal invitation. Like I said, section two of the site user agreement specifies that you only invite people that you know to your network. Um, so everybody here is welcome to send me a LinkedIn invitation as long as you send me a connection, a, a personal note. All right, we're also going to talk about setting privacy settings. There's a couple things that you want to make sure you do, and we'll go over those here when we get the link when I show some profiles here in just a few minutes. Number one, you want to make sure who can see you. You want everybody to see you. I have met, I've talked with people who have hid their profile, but they're in job search. I have seen people go, oh yeah, well, my phone number's on there. I said, well, let's go take a look. And we go, look, well, they've hidden their phone number from people so they can't be found. How do you expect, I mean, you want a recruiter to easily reach out to you. Now, a lot of recruiters, are paying LinkedIn and using the LinkedIn portal, and then they can get that information from you. But what if it's, you know, a, a business colleague or a friend who's trying to reach out to call you about a, a future job or something or send you an email? You want to make sure that everybody can see all your contact information. Emails, you want to make sure that every email you have, you have set up. And we'll show you that in just a second. You can have multiple emails in LinkedIn that if you have a family email account and then you have a personal email account and then you have your job search email account and I advise everybody, you should have a separate job email account. That way all your job stuff goes to one place for you. And don't forget, keep checking that even if you do get a job uh, because this is where you've made your network at. So you can list all those emails that way anytime anybody, if they happen to know another email, they can still link in with you. The other thing to do too is when you do get a job again and you are working, make sure that you add that work email address into your LinkedIn profile. Now, even when you're not working there anymore, if somebody happens to know, well, this is the email address that he used to use, or this email address is what he used to have, he or she used to have, they can still reach out and get hold of you. So make sure you add those when you are working. Number three, make sure you turn off others like me. And I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second. When you look at profiles over on the right-hand side of the screen, all of a sudden you'll see this thing, will say, well, here are other people just like the person you're looking at. Why do you wanna show, why do you wanna promote other people who do what you do? So I'll show you where that setting is here in just a second. Join groups. You can join up to 50 groups. Now that's a lot. I say maybe 10 or 15 groups is probably what you want to start out with. Uh, I think groups are very, very important because what that will allow you to do is that will allow you to connect with somebody who you're not a first read connection with because it can, it'll, uh, in the group setting, you can then connect with somebody and reach out to them. What kind of groups do you want to join? You want to join alumni groups. You want to join groups that do what you do, whatever it is, whatever field you're in, project management, uh, recruiting, um, whatever it is you do, find a LinkedIn group and join them. Uh, find a couple career groups. I'll show you the Career DFW group here in just a second. Uh, we have over 12,000 members, so you can join that if you'd like. Uh, here it is right here. So, you know, join the, look out, look for Career DFW. LinkedIn group, we have over 12,000. We just passed 12,300 members. Uh, the group's been going for 12 years now. Uh, there's a lot of great discussions that go on in the group, so you're welcome to uh, check that out. We also have a careerusa.org group. You're welcome to join that LinkedIn group also. I will tell you, let me back up for a second. I will look at your profile. If your profile is not mostly complete, meaning I have a good idea of what it is you're, you do, what you want to do. I may not let you into the group. And the reason being is because why are you on LinkedIn if your profile is not mostly complete? 
be sure to use a good headshot. Very, very important. Personally, I use LinkedIn all the time because people send me an email and I go, oh, I'm not really sure who that person is. Let me look them up on LinkedIn. Oh yeah, I remember that person. I spoke to their career networking group back in February or something. So I'm good with faces, but I'm not good with names. So be sure to use a good headshot so people can see who you are. This is too busy of a headshot, okay? I apologize for it being blurry because it's what I had to pull over and, and blow up a little bit, but you can't really see who this person is. This person is Gail. Is it Gail him or Gail her? This happens to be Gail Houston, who's the senior recruiter at Intuit. You know, you get these little bits of jewels throughout the over years doing this and it's like, ah, I'm gonna say this because this is, I need to show people this is what you don't do on LinkedIn. You know, you want a headshot, you know, maybe show, you can show shoulders if you'd like, you could zoom out a little bit more. Uh, you know, my joke is if you have no hair or gray hair, you can zoom in even more and just, you know, go from the eyebrows to the, you know, bottom of your mouth or something to zoom really in. But let people see who you are. Now, Something that LinkedIn just rolled out in the last few weeks is a circle that actually goes around your picture saying that you're open to new opportunities. Well, what that does is that causes to sometimes cover over part of your face. So if you're gonna have that banner on, you need to go back in and edit your photo and I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. So you zoom out a little bit more so that people can see who you are. You wanna make sure your background is plain. You don't want a hand on the shoulder. You don't want a busy background. Uh, you wanna make it easy. You wanna make it plain and simple for everybody to see. Here's a really cool program that uh, I haven't talked about much lately, but something I've, I've used in the past and I thought it's really cool. It's called Photo Feeler, P-H-O-T-O-F-E-E-L-E-R.com. Uh, you can just Google it and you'll find it there. What it will do is it will take your photo and then it will evaluate it, okay? So here's somebody and, and the voting is by other people. You get to vote on other people's uh, pictures, what you think of their picture. So here's a picture so far she's had 80 votes and she has a, a rating of, you know, it's how do you feel about this photo feeler? How do you feel about this photo? So 76% feel that she feels that she's competent. 50% thinks she's likable. 83% thinks that she's in, influential. But you know, that likability scale, that's, that's sort of low. So, you know, what could she do to maybe increase it or whatever? Well, here's something she did. She changed it by adding glasses. Everything moved up in the scale, okay? So something you may want to consider is loading a picture, see what happens, and then maybe change it. Maybe you need a blank pair of uh, glasses. I actually have glasses. Uh, I don't wear them because I don't need them for close up. I just need them for when I drive and when I read. Uh, but I will put them in my photo because I know the glasses tend to help. So just something to think about, photofeeler.com. Uh, interesting program. Uh, you know, it's a great way to find out a, a couple things about people. One other thing about LinkedIn. When you're using the desktop version, uh, you know, your photos on the upper left hand is in the left hand side of the screen. Well, why would you want to be facing away from your profile? So this, in this sense, she, in this picture, she's facing, she would be facing towards the edge of LinkedIn, of the edge of the screen. This way, she's facing either more towards you or looking towards her profile. So Consider, you know, and it's easy to take a photo and just flip it, you know, reverse the photo. So if, if you're looking out, you may want to flip it and look in towards your profile. So here are some things that help with uh, uh, on the research with photo feeler from what we found is that by having good business attire will increase your score. Smiling with visible teeth will increase your score. A sort of a laughing smile a little bit of a squinch, a smile, mouth closed will add a little bit less, a defined jawline even less. If you have eyeglasses, gives you a half a point maybe, and as long as you're making good eye contact, looking at the camera will add just a little bit more on there. So 
Uh, those are the big E positive sides. On the negative side, not having a smile. If your photo isn't too bright or under oversaturated, undersaturated, you know, will count against you. Uh, if you can't quite see all your eyes, so if you have glasses on, if you have a hair that's sort of covering part of your hair, part of your eyes, that's going to count against you. If you don't want to see the whole body, that will count against you. Like I said, shoulders, shoulders up are all we need to see. If the photo is too dark, if you're wearing sunglasses, I don't know why you wear sunglasses on a professional photo like this. And uh, if you're just using, if you zoomed in and only used your face, so you've cut in really, really close, you know, uh, that would all count against you. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at, let me escape out of that. Um, let's look at a few profiles here. So th this is my, I'm gonna, first thing we'll do is we'll show you my, here's my profile here. Um, this is the basic thing. One of the things you wanna make sure you do is anytime you see red at the very top, you wanna make sure you look at those things. And you wanna get rid of, you wanna get rid of those uh, objects, okay? You don't want any red, you wanna make it, uh, uh, you, you, wanna, you wanna make sure you've taken all your things. How much time should you spend on LinkedIn? Maybe a half hour a day, maybe 15, 15 minutes or a half hour. This isn't an all day thing. You find somebody and then what do you do? You go do an informational interview, you reach out to them, you get it offline. You wanna get it offline as best you can. Um, so here, let's take a look at my network here. And here are people, I have 83 people currently that have sent me that have sent me invitations, but no message. So these are people I haven't connected with. Uh, look right here, you see how this is that new banner I've talked about for open to work. Well, what it's done now, it's covered up part of her face. So it, she really needs to go and back her face out. So it's not as uh, covering up, you know, not covering up as much. Now here you see Don, Don's photo, he has backed it up a little bit and it looks a little bit better. So just sort of know that uh, you wanna, you know, just to make sure that even with the banner on here that you that you put that on here. All right, uh, job, here is the job tab across the top here where you can go and you can say what you're interested in uh, and you can find jobs that are on here. I think it's a really, it's a great little tool. More and more people are using it. Uh, it is costly to the job poster. I mean, it does cost them, so it's not a free event. Um, so just be aware of, be aware of that. Uh, messages, if people send you messages, you can go through and you can find all your messages right here. Uh, and, and you can see what's, what's going on with people. Notifications, so you wanna make sure you clear out your notifications. I do that a couple of times a day. People who've liked my comments or liked my post or seen something, I clear those out. Uh, currently, I've got everything all cleared out. All right, so back to the home screen. So there's a couple ways to get to your profile. Number one, you can click on your picture down here on the, on the left-hand side, or you can click up here on the right-hand side up where you see your little picture here. So I'm gonna click on my profile first. And so here I wanna show you, I wanna point out a couple things. Number one, I've taken my banner and customized it. I had a picture of my book. I had a word cloud uh, that describes who I am, what kinds of things I do. And then I wanted to make it easy and I put my email and phone number in this banner so that anybody who goes to this page, if they come to it from Google or anything, would be able to see my contact information and be able to reach out to me. Now, if I go to my contact information, I list both my websites because it's always important to list career if you have your career USA, let people know about it. I have my phone number, I have my email on there. Okay, very important to have these two things on here. Um, I do have over 500 connections. Um, here is your job titles, and you want to make sure that if somebody was to search for a manufacturing manager, 
it would come up. If somebody's going to search for an operation manager, I would come up or a general manager. I'm not going to be coming up, uh, I, you know, nobody types in accomplished manufacturing manager. And you have a couple options here. You can use a comma in between the job titles, or you can use this straight up and down line. That line is located right above the inner key uh, as a shift, shift and the key right above the inner key on your keyboard. You can do either. The important thing is you want to make sure a comma is okay, but you want to make sure there's a space between titles. Don't have these all jammed together because then it's not searchable. And this is prime. This is number one searchable area because when a recruiter is going to be looking for somebody, they're going to put in a job title and then they're usually going to enter two or three skills and a location. Those are the top three things that people are going to, that the recruiter is going to look for. So if you, if I had manager slash operations with no space there, though these words would not show up on an, on a, uh, on a uh, searchable, would not show up as searchable because that's not a word. Okay. Manufacturing manager would show up, general manager would show up. So be sure to leave a space or use the comma. Comma is okay. You have an, an option as you're editing and you edit all this by clicking on this little uh, carrot right over here, the little crayon. Uh, you can show your college if you want. You can show uh, you know, where you're currently working at or whatever. Now, I get to see, this is my profile. I get to see that I'm open to work and these are the job titles that I'm looking for. You can edit that by just clicking on the little pencil again. But it's only viewable to recruiters because I have not turned on that little banner that goes around my picture. So if I were to put that banner on, then anybody would see that I'm looking for work. The about us section, very, very important. I do not put my phone number and email address on the very first line because it's right here. Somebody's going to look for it, try to put it in the picture. So your about section, you want to make sure you talk about it in first person. Okay, this is what I do. This is how I can help you. That's what, you know, I always like to say, how can I help your company? You know, I do things better, faster, smarter. Uh, now, I've loaded into my, I have strength finders listed here. And so by listing it down here, eh, doesn't really say much if somebody didn't know about strength finders. But look up here in, um, let's see here. Look up here in this paragraph and you're going to see, here's my first uh, strength finders. Here's my second strength. Here's my third strength. And where is fourth and fifth? Uh, oh, right here, responsible and delivery. So here are my fourth and fifth ones. So I took strength finders and took the sentences to describe who I am and stuck it in there to help people understand who I am and what I'm about. Okay. Um, oops. Clear. So uh, you can, you know, I talk about who it is. Once again, I do say, let's connect it. You know, let's get connected. Here's my email address. Here's my phone number. And I've added this little hashtag at the end of it. And somebody actually found me the other day and sent me an email that I was looking, you know, they saw us. I see you're looking for a job and the person was not a recruiter. They don't pay for the recruiting package, but obviously they must have searched and found because I have O-N-O, -O, open to new opportunities in there, somebody actually reached out to me. Now, I talk about keywords, keywords being very, very, very important. What I did was I went and loaded a bunch of keywords at the bottom of my about section. Now, nobody's going to read them, but if they're searching for it, here is one of the places they're going to find one of my keywords. All right, the next thing down is you want to make sure you're an all-star. Very, very important. What's it take to be an all-star? You have to have, I think, at least 100 connections. You have to have a complete profile, but it will walk you through exactly what it is you need to do. Uh, it'll tell you, you know, what the next thing is. Do you have something here to fill in? Do you have something there to fill in? 
it'll walk you through to get all that on there. So you want to get the all-star status because that raises you to the very top of the list. You want to check out your dashboard. You want to know who's looking at your profile. Are you getting hits? Okay. You want to be getting five to 10 hits a day if you can by posting comments, by sharing comments. So somebody, I don't know how many people see the post that I put on LinkedIn and Facebook talking about, uh, uh, talking about this event or the interviewing session tomorrow or the resume session on Thursday or the Friday group that, we, that I sponsor. But um, when I post those kinds of things, if, if you're in a group, so if you're in, in like the Career DFW group and you reshare and you look at it, all you can do is like a post in a group. But if you like a post in the main news feed, you actually can share it to your network. That was one of the questions that came up earlier today that I did a little research on. So you want to make sure people are doing this. You can go click and you can click here and see who's been looking at my profile. You can see how it's been going every day. I had a nice big hit uh, the week of June 16th. You know, so far this week, I'm at uh, 46 for the week. So, and then you can see the last few, you can see the last four or five people who have looked at me. Uh, I don't pay for the premium version, so I don't get to, to see that. So, uh, it's just a little bit different. Okay, then you want to get down to here's activities, things that I've posted here lately. Uh, so now you're talking about your job. Okay, what it is you do, what have you done? Now, you don't have a job. You're, un you're unemployed. When you don't have a current job listed, you no longer, well, no longer are an all-star. You've got to have a current job. So how do you get that current job? My suggestion is, in the job title, is the title of the job you're looking for. Production manager, manufacturing manager. You list a couple job titles right there. The name of the company is your phone number. So people can easily reach out to you. You can add the hashtag ONO if you like, and put that in your job title if you like to. And then you list three or four bullet points on what it is you do, successes that you've had. Okay. Very, very important that every one of these bullet points in a job description on your resume and on LinkedIn show what it is you do and how you can help a company. Okay, so, so facilitator, here is, you know, I, I set the weekly agenda, I lead a leadership team, whatever, you know, try to list, you know, try to put numbers on here. So you can go through and you want to, you want to put in details of, of what it is, successes that you've done. All right, so that's sort of enough about, uh, about the, uh, profile. Let's talk a little bit about some security settings that you need to do. And to get to that, you come up here, upper right hand corner where it says me, click on me, and there's a couple different options. So number one is, let's go to settings and privacy. Okay, so number one is you can change how the public sees your profile. So when you click on that, you'll see what the public sees. Okay, as you see down here, that whole thing that I'm looking for a job, that's not on here anymore. Okay, I'm open to new opportunities. So that's why I wanna make sure it's listed up high where somebody else can see it. You wanna make sure your public profile is on. Now, if you're gonna make a whole bunch of changes, you may wanna turn this off, make the changes and then turn it back on again. Okay, um, you'll see here, you have some different options. Do you want your photo only to appear to your first degree connection? just to your network or to all LinkedIn members. Quite frankly, I make it public because I use the same photo on LinkedIn that I have on Facebook, uh, everything, because I'm marketing myself with the same brand. And then here are all the different things that you can show on the public profile. What do you have to hide? Okay, now if you're a recruiter and you don't want people to find you, that's one thing. Or if you're the CEO of a company and you don't want people to be reaching out to you, Okay, then fine, turn some of these things off if you want. But if you're in job search, put it all on there so anybody can find, any, that anybody can find you, okay? If you have not edited your LinkedIn profile 
there's something nice and easy. So here's LinkedIn. Uh, I use TX, Jay Morris. And the reason I did this years ago, I've been on LinkedIn now for 15 years, probably, maybe 12, 15 years, almost since it started. I was one of the early users of it. When I did this, I really wasn't thinking about putting my first name, last name on there. Uh, so the reason I have T-X-J-M-O-R-R-I-S is that was my first email address when the company, the first email I ever had at the first company that had email. And I've just sort of, I sort of just adopted that and kept and just carried that over. So uh, I would recommend first name, last name, and maybe put T-X at the end or PMP at the end or MBA at the end or something, uh, you know, try to get your full first and last name on it. You click on this little uh, pencil right here and it'll take you to a screen where you can go enter that information. All right, I'm gonna go back to settings again, privacy and settings. Um, you know, you can set who sees your email, who can see your connections. I allow my connections to see my connections. So if you're connected to me, you can see who else I'm connected with if I can help you. All right, viewers of this profile also view. You want to make sure that this is turned off, okay? This is, uh, you want to make sure this is turned off. And here's why. So here's a person who is a partner manager uh, at Verizon, okay? Uh, well, if you look over here, here are other people who do the exact same thing she does. Why do you want to promote yourself? So if, if she was to come up in a search, if Lori was to come up in a search, I would then go, well, okay, no, Lori didn't have a lot on here. Like, well, let me see what uh, Bill can do, or let me see what Curtis can do. And I'll check their profiles out and see if maybe they do what I need them to do for my company. Okay, so do that. So here's another profile that has turned that off. Okay, so this is Marty. It's a gentleman I met. Uh, he lives in Chicago. We have the big networking group up in Chicago. Uh, so all this does is this just shows me other people who I may know. It doesn't show other people like Marty. So make sure you turn that off. Make sure that's off so that nobody else will be able to see it. Very, very, very important. Um, go through the rest of these kinds of things. Who else can see your activities? I mean, there's lots and lots of data. Spend, spend an hour and go through every option that's on here. Um, let's talk about account. So we mentioned earlier about you can have multiple email addresses here. As you see right here, I have eight email addresses linked to this account. One of them is my primary. This is the email address that many of you know that you can reach out to me. This is what's on my LinkedIn profile. But here are other email addresses. North Dallas Career Focus Group, Jeff at CareerDFW.org. Gmail account, calendar, uh, CareerDFW at Gmail. Here are all these other email addresses that people can, that could send out to me to be able to reach out to me. Make sure you have those on there. When you do add an email, you have to have access to it because it's going to want to certify who you are. Okay. All right. Let's go back to LinkedIn. Okay. So let's, uh, let's see if we have a couple of questions here. I see Susan's asked a question. If you click on ignore to an invitation, does it count against the requester? No, it doesn't count against the requester unless you go, I don't know this person. So if I were to go to my network, let's see who we have here. Somebody just, okay, I hope, uh, Keith, I hope you're not on the, okay, Keith's not on the, on the uh, I don't see him on the uh, seminar right now. If he is, you need to send me another invitation. I'm going to click ignore on Keith. But if I were to click here, I don't know Keith, that would count against him. But clicking ignore over here doesn't count against any of these people. Okay, only if you were to go click, I don't know Keith. And the only time I click on that is if it's somebody from India, Europe, someplace like that. Okay, so Nora asks, uh, do you think it's worth paying for a premium account? I've used the basic free account for years and it's done everything I've needed it to do. Uh, the premium account is 30 bucks a year, uh, 30 bucks a month. You can sign up for it for a month and see what does it do? It gives you extra in-mails, but 
I think you can probably find most people easily. Even if, you know, you find somebody on LinkedIn, they don't have an email address and you want to reach out to them, you know what company they work for, call the company up, ask the receptionist, say, hey, I'm trying to get an email to check. How do I, I can, can I get his email? I, I had this and it bounced back to me. Can you give me his email account? They probably will do that. They're not thinking about those kinds of things. Um, let's see here. Carlos says, if you turn off view, others like you, that will also shut off LinkedIn recommending, recommending you beside other people's profiles. I don't know. Uh, but the important thing is, you know, you don't want to be promoting other people. You want to promote you. Okay. So um, I'm not, I don't know if it will turn you off. It probably won't because you're just, you're telling your profile not to show other people like me. So I, if I were to guess, I would say it doesn't do it, but I don't know that for a fact. Uh, does anybody have a profile? We've got about five or 10 more minutes. Anybody have a profile you'd like us to look at? And remember, we, we're live online. So anything we do uh, will be shown to everybody on um, online. Uh, Susan asked, uh, uh, where and how can we create a background that you have with your words? Um, it's, I think it's just type in the Google word cloud. I know there's a couple places out there that do it. Uh, the one that I have, I don't know if that program actually exists anymore because I did that, oh, probably 10, 12 years ago. Um, the newest programs I've seen aren't quite as fancy, don't have a, as many backgrounds or as many colors or anything like that. Uh, but there, I know there's a couple places where you can uh, just type word cloud into Google and you'll find a program or two that will do it. Okay, so somebody just answered the word cloud question now. Does anybody want us to look at your profile? Would you like to have a profile review? Going once, going twice. Unless you have any other questions, if you have any questions you're ready, you're welcome to, uh, let's see here, where else? Backgrounds, backgrounds. All right, so here, Ken's asking on Facebook, how do I get the featured section to show on my public profile? It seems only to show up with people who are connected with me. The feature program, all right. So once again, I would think go to your settings here. Let's go take a look under privacy and settings and edit your public profile and come down here. So you want to make sure your profile is public to everybody. And um, okay, there's no option here for features. So it must just be buried into LinkedIn that you can only do it if you uh, it's restricted to however LinkedIn restrict, restricts it. Because if you're featured, I imagine the featured section, let's see here. See, my feature section doesn't show up either. So I, I may not have even entered anything in my feature section. I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm not really sure. So I don't see it. Sorry, I, I, I don't have an answer for that. Uh, I will. Okay, Melissa Harvey. So let's take a look. look Melissa would like to look at her profile. M E L I S S A H A R. Melissa Harvey. Melissa, are you in Indianapolis? Is this the right Melissa Harvey? You're in Austin, Texas. So this isn't you. So let's see here. Um, well, I don't see you, Melissa. 
I listed United States. Oh, uh, I'm looking. Oh, here we go. There we are. All right, so good. You've got little hashtags. We know uh, transformer marketer, demand generation strategy. Is, is this word the word? So my question would be, and I'm not really sure, would this be the word that they would have on a job description? Okay, channel marketing business partner. I could see that. Uh, marketeer. I don't know if that would be a, is this a job title? Um, you know, you, you may want to make sure, I think it's real important that, uh, that you list a job title, that you put job titles up here so that people can go and find you. Um, so your about section. So plain title up here, doesn't really tell people what you are. I would go and, and come up with some, you know, put something up here to tell, something more than just the generic message that's on here. Uh, let's see what kind of contact information we have. We just had Melissa-Harvey-Marketing, okay? So you did something different to put on here. Um, the About Us section. I have a, a multiple screens, so that's why I'm looking away from you right now. Um, functional expertise, good, a lot of good keywords in here. Um, no way to get hold of you if we're trying to get hold of you. So um, if you want us to reach out to you, there's no email address that I can get hold of. I have to go through LinkedIn, so it would be more difficult for me. If you're open for new opportunities, I would put O and O in there. I think you need to break this section up. You really shouldn't have more than three or four lines max. I really prefer three lines per paragraph because I'm gonna go blurry eye when I read this. So shorter couple paragraphs would be more effective than having one big paragraph like this. Um, activities follows on experience. Once again, you've got you know this huge paragraph on here. Uh, I think you should uh, you know tell us a little bit about it and then give us a couple bullet points. Tell us. Give us some results, what it is you've done. Remember, every bullet point you put on your LinkedIn profile on your resume needs to have a result. And if you have a result, that will uh, draw somebody in. So make sure you put that on here. This, this tells me what you could do. This doesn't tell me what you've done. I don't see results in this. Uh, you know, show me some results. You got to have results because results sell. Okay, so that would be that would be my comment down here. Uh, let's go down and look at your skills section real quick. Education, licenses, skills. So with skills, you know, I didn't talk about this earlier. I'm hoping that uh, Melissa, these are your top three skills: strategy, product marketing, and leadership. Uh, if these are if there are other skills. And here are a whole lot of other skills that they've put on here. Um, if any one of these skills down here are more important, you need to move them up here to your top three skills. One other suggestion, make these categories, put them in alphabetical order. You just drag the little hamburger and you pull them up and down. Put them in ABC order, not necessarily what's most. If, you, if one of them stands out and you really want it to be number one, you can put it on there. But the rest of them should all be in alphabetical order. It's just easier. That's how we're trained to read things. It would just be a little bit easier to go through. You've got a couple recommendations, which are good. They're uh, current, 2020. So uh, you want to have a couple recommendations, preferably from um, 2020. One more thing about recommendations. If you don't have any, you can contact a old boss or somebody and you can take an old job description, make it easy for the person writing the job, writing the recommendation. Take an old job description and type up, uh, you know, dear John, you know, you wrote me this, uh, you know, job description, you know, in fall of 2019. Uh, I'd love if you would put the following information into a LinkedIn recommendation for me. 
and just copy and paste or, you know, directly type exactly what you want him to do. And at the end say, you know, and if you agree with these comments, you, if you'd like to add anything else, please let me know. I really would value your recommendation. So by giving them the bulk of the profile, it will make things much, much easier for you. Interest down here. Be sure if you're interested in a company, be sure to follow a company. I didn't talk about this earlier, but if you uh, apply for a company, uh, apply for a job at a company, follow that company because I know a lot of recruiters that when they would look you up, if you were to pop up, they're going to go down and look at your profile and go, hmm, are you following us? Because, you know, you want a job with us. Are you following us? Very, very, very important. All right. Well, Melissa, thank you very much for your uh, profile here. Um, what I want to do now, uh, we're just about out of time. So uh, I just want to share a couple more things with everybody. Um, just uh, let people know if you live outside the DFW area, thank you for uh, joining us from Austin. Uh, we have a lot of great programming on Career DFW and Career USA. Okay, I'm really you know, glad to do this. Every Tuesday, we do LinkedIn Tuesday. Next Tuesday, Ruth Lipsky will be with us. Uh, tomorrow, um, and that is not the first, uh, that should be 7-8. On 7-8, uh, we'll be doing interviewing Wednesdays, and we do interviews every Wednesday at 1 o'clock. Uh, session 13, avoiding interview crashes. So we'll be talking about all the issues. We've had 12 different seminars already. This will be session number 13, and that is tomorrow, uh, not a week ago. And then on Thursday, we do effective resumes every Thursday. If you'd like to send in your resume, you're welcome to send that in. You can hide the title information because remember, all that stuff will be on LinkedIn, on Facebook for other people to view. And so that will be on this coming Thursday. We do interviewing every Thursday at one o'clock. And then this Friday, which is the 10th, just add seven to everything, on the 10th, uh, we have a labor law attorney. So I think this will be a fascinating presentation Friday morning at 9.30 at the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. We'll be talking about labor laws. We've already gotten several good questions people have submitted and I've sent them on to the attorney who will answer those questions for us. And uh, then I've asked her to sort of talk about how have things changed over the last few months? What is she seeing from the labor law kind of thing? We can't talk about any specific companies because she represents companies. She doesn't represent you or me. We could never hire her, but she only represents a company, so, but she's willing to talk about those issues as they pop up. Uh, just as a reminder, these sessions have been recorded, will be recorded, and they're on the Career DFW Facebook page. They will be on the Career USA YouTube channel, and I'm going to show you both of those in just a second. Here is what the Facebook page looks like. If uh, you be sure, please click on the follow. Uh, at the very bottom, we see that red arrow. What that'll do is every time we go live, Throughout the week, you'll get an alert on your phone saying that we're currently live and you'll be able to click and write immediately get to us. Um, where you see the blue arrow, that's where all the videos are located and all the videos are grouped together by subject matter. So you can see all the interviewing ones together. You can see all the LinkedIn presentations together. They'll all be there uh, and they're all grouped right together. On the YouTube channel, it looks something like this. If you click on the blue playlist button, um, it will then click you and you'll see the five or six playlists. Actually, I think there's six of them now. Uh, and where the red arrow is, if you click view full playlist, you will see all the sessions that have been recorded. So just as a reminder, Career DFW is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We have no full or part-time employees. I've never gotten, I don't take any money out of the organization. All the speakers that talk, all of our talks, they're all volunteers. Uh, we survive on donations. It helps pay for uh, the web hosting, paying for Zoom, paying for uh, the filings that we have to do. Uh, please consider when you do get a job that maybe you'll make a donation and help us out so we can continue on. We've been, up, we've been doing this since 2008 and we plan to keep doing it for years to come. If your company happens to offer matching donations, please consider making a matching, please consider allowing your donation to double in value. Uh, if you don't see us listed on the list, please contact me. I will get us on the list. I've done that for two different companies last December. So uh, two different employees who wanted to get their uh, uh, donation doubled. So you can please reach out to me. So thank you very much for joining us today. 
Uh, have a great rest of the day. Hopefully we'll see you uh, tomorrow for interviewing or Thursday for resumes or Friday for our um, thing with labor law attorneys. So thank you all for being with us. Uh, have a great rest of the afternoon.